When I think of a cruiser, I think of a chill bike that's happy to just glide and, well, cruise along the highway. Not an MC with sport bike power. So the question is, does the power cruiser segment make sense? Let's find out in this episode of Beyond the Ride with the 2023 Ducati Javel V4. Powering the bike is probably my favorite engine today, the V4 Gran Turismo. It's got four valves per cylinder, counter-rotating crankshaft, twin pulse firing order, liquid-cooled as well. It's got a displacement of 1,158cc and punches out 168 horsepower at 10,750 RPM and 126 newton meters of torque at 7,500 RPM. The stopping power of the bike is, well, the best in the business. You got Brembo calipers, both front and rear, and the front brakes are even Stylima calipers. That's really the top of the line. You get a fully adjustable upside down front fork and a single shock absorber with a separate piggyback reservoir. The front tire is 120 by 70, while the rear is 240 by 45, both size 17s. The tires are Pirelli Diablo Rosso 3s. So let's talk about the aesthetics of the bike. Now, typically cruisers are a little bit more retro, classic design. This <laughs> clearly is not. This is my favorite part of the bike right here, the silhouette. You see the exposed tire with a single-sided swing arm. You see the exhaust right there. Um, and what's kind of funny is I didn't actually notice this until much later on when, uh, that this right here, it may look like it's part of the engine, but it's actually just a cover. It's actually plastic. Um, so it does still give that cruiser vibe to it, but really that's a V4 engine uh, in there somewhere. Um, and this right here, thank goodness that it's not really the engine because your leg would be fried if it was. I love that the rear foot pegs are nicely tucked away right here. So the pillion sits here, the foot pegs are there, and it's kind of high. So you are going to be, your passenger is going to be, well, perched up pretty high above the driver of the bike. The lines are ultra aggressive, as you can see right there. Um, the front of the bike, this, honestly, for me, originally, it wasn't my favorite. But the more I look at it, the more I ride it, the more I appreciate it. And now, I actually think it looks pretty good. It's a little kind of minimalist if you look at it from the front, and then you go to the side, and it becomes something totally different. It's just, it's, it's a little bit of a head scratcher when you first look at it from the front, right? You see it arriving. It's not something that's ultra uber aggressive. And then when you see it from the side, your idea of the bike completely changes. As I mentioned, the quad exit exhaust looks really good right there. Um, and you can change that because it's, it, it isn't as loud as I probably want it to be. Or you could just have it decap. Uh, maybe that, that would work. Um, but of course, with Euro 5, you need it to be a little bit more muted uh, than, than I would have preferred. So I'll, I'll show you what I mean or let you hear it. It looks pretty badass, right? But when you start her up, probably could be a little bit louder. Now, I like the rear of the bike and Jack actually wasn't too happy with the, the way the, the, the rear light, the brake lights look. I actually really like it. And as you can see, the indicators are down here and it's got the honeycomb look. So if you hit the brakes, they light up even more. So for safety purposes, that's actually really good because the, the vehicle behind you is definitely gonna see that. The seat is nice, plush, and comfy for both for the driver and the pillion. 
I wish it had a little bit more design, to be honest with you, but that's something that I'm sure Duca Bike can fix. And for the pillion, you have the grab rail right here underneath the seat, nice and tucked away so that it's not in the way. Um, usually, when other bikes, you see them kind of sticking out. It doesn't look too pleasant. But here, of course, Ducati being Ducati, they hid it underneath the seat. Over here in the cockpit area, it's, well, pretty much what you would imagine it to be. Uh, it's got a push start button. Of course, it's going to be keyless. Um, and the handlebars are not your traditional handlebars that you would have on most cruisers out there. So it's kind of, it actually kind of has this scooterish vibe uh, to it. And something that's a little, again, a little bit more modern than most scooters, than most uh, cruisers, I should say. So you have the controls right here in the side. Again, this is uh, typical to all Ducati bikes. Well, the Ducati bikes, not the Ducati Scramblers. Um, over here on the left, you have the control to change the riding modes. You have sport, touring, urban, and wet. Fuel indicator. Good job. <laughs> lap timer. Imagine a cruiser with a lap timer. Only Ducati. Of course, you have Bluetooth connectivity as well to hook up to your phone. Tire calibration, all the good stuff right here. And it's easy to maneuver this. Uh, it's easy to figure it out. It's very intuitive. Now, something that I do really appreciate, and Ducati does this really well with their bikes, is that they've kind of tucked away the indicators. And they are right here, as you can see. That is pretty dope. So you don't have stuff like sticking out of the bike. And I just like the way Ducati has done this uh, with their other models as well. So the previous generation Javel actually had a trellis frame. And the, the trellis frame was kind of like the signature for the bike, very similar to the way the Monster's signature back in the day was a trellis frame as well. And of course, we all know now that the, all the newer Ducatis have done away with the trellis frame. Um, and when they did it with the Monster, people were up in arms complaining about it until it kind of grew on them. But the funny thing is with the Javel, you don't really hear that many people complain that the trellis frame is gone. And one of the main reasons why they did that was to lighten the bike as well. So it is now about 15 kilograms lighter than it was before when it had a trellis frame. You got a dry weight of 211 kilograms, which is actually pretty good. It's also got a low center of gravity, which makes it really easy to ride. And you got a seat height of a very Pinoy friendly 790 millimeters. I'm five foot six with a 764 millimeter inseam. And I am pretty much flat foot on this bike. So I may be flat foot on this bike, but on other cruisers, I actually have a bend on my knee. So that just goes to show you how different Ducati's iteration is of a cruiser. So before we go out on a ride, I just want to remind you guys to please like the video, share the video as well, and of course, subscribe to the MotoDeal YouTube channel. Okay, so here we go, the Ducati Javel V4. Uh, you know, a V4 engine on this bike, on a cruiser, makes you wonder, does it make sense? Well, we're about to find out. You know, the seating position, first of all, is my more or less preferred seating position. It's, it's you know, it's uh, mid controls. I actually enjoy uh, the, the, where, where, the, where the foot pegs are. And if need be, I can actually stand up on the bike. It's actually, you know, it's, it's typically for cruisers, you can't do that. And, but this one, I can. So it goes to show also that it's not your traditional um, cruiser. It's also not a naked, it's also not a sport bike. So what is it? Well, it's a Javel V4. You know, with this seating position, you know, and the seat, it's nice and comfortable. You can be chill on the bike if you want to. You can just cruise along if you wish. Um, and it's, it, you know, it does what a, what a cruiser uh, is supposed to do. It's supposed, it, it can do that. But it also does stuff that other cruisers can't. And that's what makes this bike really special. You feel a lot of the power in the mid-range area, but there's really power everywhere. You know, it's got the same engine as my Multistrada V4, but for some reason, 
I can actually, there's a lot of usable power at lower speeds. The Multistrada, at least my Multistrada, I, it, it feels like it's a little bit jerky, jerkier um, at lower revs. And that's something that's something, you know, I, I kind of wish that the Multistrada had this kind of um, configuration, the, the, the same uh, layout um, as, as, as this. But it, I noticed in my, in my Multistrada, it doesn't like going slow. It needs to go fast. Whereas this bike, it actually can do both. And that's really amazing. You know, this bike does have the rear cylinder uh, deactivation system. That's when, if you're below 4,000 RPM, only two of the four cylinders are working. And once you get past that, you get all four uh, to start working. So if you're you know, at lower speeds, 4,000 RPM or less, uh, the bike is not gonna be too hot. Um, and it, it does help with that. So it's, it's a nice uh, touch that they, they have with this bike because you know, it, you're, you're really close to the engine. Um, and you are gonna feel, you're still gonna feel the heat. Don't get me wrong. If you're stuck in city traffic on this bike, you are still gonna start feeling the heat. But it could have been worse if they did not include the rear cylinder deactivation system. So that's ingenious for Ducati to have here on this V4 Diavel. And another thing that's funny about this cruiser, it does have a quick shifter. So right then and there, you know it's not just about cruising, right? It's not just about uh, gliding along the highway. It's also about speed. But I guess if you're a Ducati, it's always about speed, no matter what type of bike you're on, whether you're on a sport bike or a naked or on a, the Hyper Motard, everything about Ducati is always about speed. And it makes sense that their cruiser is about speed as well. It is a lot lighter and more nimble than I had anticipated. Um, you know, with a, the, the tire as big as it is, the, the rear tire as big as it is, as fat as it is, you know, it's, it's kind of like comparable to some cars, actually, if you think about it, how, how fat that rear tire is. Um, I did not expect it to be as flickable and as nimble as this. I didn't really take it on too many twisties, but you know the way this bike is, it, it, it can handle it. In fact, if you look at the chicken strips on the bike, you can see that this bike was pretty much leaned all the way down <laughs> at one point because you, don't, you, see the, the, you see the wear and tear on, on, on the tire, the, AKA the, the chicken strips. So that's something to know, that's something to, 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 that tells you also that this bike uh, is more than just about going straight. When you think about the competition of the bike, um, there's really, I don't know, I mean, at least from my experience, you really have the Triumph Rocket and maybe the Harley Davidson Sportster S. Uh, and this bike is, is just, you know, superior than those if you're talking about the performance. Uh, this, those bikes are more traditional uh, cruiser types. This one is definitely something that's more about performance. I mean, the, the Rocket, don't get me wrong, the Rocket has a very powerful engine. Both, both the Sportster S and the Rocket both have powerful engines. But this, the V4, is a lot more special. I mean, this really is, is a lot more zippy. It's a lot quicker. You know, it's also lighter than the, than the Rocket. Significantly lighter, I should say. And it's, it's more uh, rideable, I would say. I mean, it, this is something that you can actually if you choose to, use it on the daily. And the Rocket is not something that you would use on a daily, but this bike, you can actually conceivably use it on the daily. And the, the, the handling of the bike is really, really good. You know, it, it handles kind of like a naked, it looks like a cruiser, but it's got the power of a sport bike. I mean, what a mixture, what a mixture uh, for, for this, for this, um, it's, 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 a, it's a type of bike that's, you don't really get this in other motorcycles. It's very unique, you know, it's something that's not, you can say that, okay, it, it, does, it does feel like a naked. And then when you give it a lot of power, it does feel like a sport bike. But when you look at it, you're like, that's a cruiser. So it, it's a little confusing in that sense, but I like it. I like that it's, it confuses people like that because, you know, that's what makes it what it is. And the brakes work really, really well. I mean, if you have a bike with this much power, you're gonna need very strong brakes. And that, that, style, that styly caliper's up front, 
you know that this thing has very, very good stopping power. So I did take the bike out at night to test out the headlights and it's actually more than enough. You don't really need to put auxiliary lights on the bike and if you do, it might ruin the look. So the, the headlight of the, of the Javel V4, more than adequate. You know, when I'm riding the bike, it makes me feel like a super villain of some sort. You know, it, like, a, like it's, it's, you know, there's a term that we use here in the Philippines and we say angas. And when you look at the bike, that's what it reminds me of. It's super angas. It's badass. And not in the sense of the badassness of, let's say, the, um, the Indian that, that we had uh, like a couple of weeks ago. This is a little bit more modern badass, right? The, the Indian is kind of like the expendables. <laughs> the older generation, old school badass. But this one is the more current, updated version of that. And in all aspects, it's superior. It's the ultimate super villain, if anything. So who would ride this bike? Hmm. Um, it's a question that I probably would... It's, it's, a, it's a tough one, to be honest with you. It's, it's a tough one to answer because it's not your beginner rider for sure. And it's not a type of person who likes you know, classic bikes like other cruisers, because it's not, it's not just a cruiser. It's, it's, it's got a, like I said, it's got, it's a, a mixture of three or four different type of bikes. Um, it's somebody who is, who likes to be different, who enjoys the performance and, the, but still enjoys a little bit of the styling of a cruiser. And it's got, I guess you gotta be a little bit uh, unique in order to really appreciate this bike because that's what the bike is it is a very unique machine that covers more than one riding style or motorcycle style or motorcycle uh, segment so to speak because it covers a range of different versions of motorcycles and this bike has it all in spades let's head back over to gourmet cafe and wrap up the video So, does a cruiser slash naked slash sport bike make sense? Honestly, not really. However, if the outcome is like this, then it doesn't really matter. The problem is, it does have an exclusive price tag. The 2023 Ducati Javel V4 starts at 2,150,000 Philippine pesos. That's not cheap. It's not for everyone. But if you are someone who can afford this bike and ends up purchasing it, you're not going to be disappointed whatsoever because it is an absolute unique experience. And if you want to learn more about the bike, other entries out there, log on to www.motodeal.com.ph. This has been Gene Rafino. Hope you guys enjoyed going beyond the ride.